the absolute bs podcast i'm your host william mccarthy and today i have a very special guest one of my very good friends genji lemansky lemansky thank you for doing this man i know we've been trying to make this work for a while our schedules have been off but uh uh you know as you know i start every episode with four questions um and the first one actually comes from cheryl because she uh i was trying to think of uh different ones tailored to the individual and she's like i really wanted to know this because she saw your art so the first question is how do you come up with your medium you want to work with? And is there an emotional state you put yourself in? Um, do you listen to music and does it change depending on what you're trying to work with? Okay, that's multiple you know, questions. Loaded. <laughs> multiple questions in one. Um, medium, I think it just varies. I mean, I have a degree in ceramics, right? I have a fine arts degree in ceramics. But I do draw and paint and sculpt, and I do I do a bunch of different things. I work with um, living material, also plants. Like I do terrariums. Um, the, what was, what was the oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you put yourself in like an emotional state? Do you listen to music or anything, or like do you do it during different times? Say you're pissed off, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna do this. Or if I'm really upset, I'll wedge clay. Yeah, There's a lot of energy. Get out on it. Um, music, lots of hard rock, nice. lots of get in the zone and just just make something. Nice. Uh, sometimes I listen to classical when I'm drawing, especially mm -hmm. if I'm about a fine line detail detail work. Because if I'm listening to something angry, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to step on my lines. <laughs> more relaxing. The more mellow than uh, my fine line work is much is much better. Nice. All right. Question number two. What this this is a lighthearted one. I just wanted to know uh, what movie or book traumatized you as a child. Um. One second. What movie or book traumatized me as a child? Nothing. No. Nothing, because. I loved horror movies yeah. growing up. Um, my auntie actually dared me to watch Exorcist for the first time on her massive, like, 120 something inch screen by myself at midnight. <laughs> and I did it. I think I was like 12 or something. And I loved it. Um, love horror movies. Um, for me, it was that uh, never in his story because of the horse that dies at the beginning. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I read a lot of horror, more scary, oh, scary novels also. Sorry, my tripod just fell. Oh, that's all right. Um, yeah, I used to read a lot of Stephen King and Dean Koontz, Sam Rice, Sam Firestock, and just yeah. horrid. Yeah, I've read a lot of Dean Koontz. I could not get into Stephen King. He just has so much detail when he writes. So it's like, if you read like 20 pages and he's just talking about a door. So then I'm like, I can't do this. So, yeah. Um, number three, since I've known you, you've always been a very disciplined, no bullshit, very perfectionist kind of um, person um, in a very good way. Have you always been that way or did that happen after the military? Uh, and I would say the military helped with that. Yeah. Because 
pre-military, I was going down some pretty dark paths. Mm-hmm. Something, I was doing things that could have landed me in jail. Yeah, I think we all did. Head, <laughs> head on the side of the road. Um, but it's more, um, I guess I did have that discipline because I knew I was going down that dark path. And I knew that the military helped shape me, which is one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why I joined. Yeah. Um, I knew I was going down that dark path and joined. So turn, turn my around 180. Awesome. And last question, um, who was one of your favorite NCOs in the Army and why? Darn every. Yeah? Oh, mine too, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No. He was just, he was just awesome. Yeah. Uh, front, which was good, you know, did stuff with us, which mm-hmm. was good. It wasn't like a do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. And very it, funny, like. Yeah, I and mean, he, was, he was hilarious. Yeah. He was, and you'd be like standing in front of the platoon and be like, man, I know this is some bullshit, but we, <laughs> we just got to get it done. And we're just like, yeah. Oh. yeah. All right, little Mansky, you've answered the four questions. I kind of want to go into your life kind of from like start to finish. So did you grow up in Hawaii? No. 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 I grew up in Japan. Oh, you did grow up in Japan. I knew you were yeah. I was born in California and lived there for about eight years. Oh, okay. Oh, Travel, travel a bit as a kid. So I like to say that I lived my first eight years uh, in California, but I actually lived a little bit in Texas, lived a little bit in Louisiana. But the bulk of my first eight years of my life was in uh, California. What and then California? In uh, LA. LA. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, I think it was 1990s when I moved to Japan. How long were you in Japan for? All the way up through graduating high school, so fourth grade, up to uh, after high school. I think I stayed for an additional six months after high school. Wow. And then, was it a culture shock at all? Or like, what was it like? It, like not, not really, because no. I mean, I'm, I'm half Japanese. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know, it was like, it would still be kind of weird, like, being over there. And um, you're used to being from the States, you know. Well, I mean, you know, I, I moved when I was younger. Yeah. I mean, I went, if I grew up you know, 18 years of my life in the States and then I moved to Japan, yeah, it might have been a culture shock, but it really wasn't. What was that school like over there for you? I went to an international school, an American oh. school. Literally, it was called the American School in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah. yeah yeah so uh one of many one of many international schools that, that are there but i went to american school in japan it's awesome were, were you uh, a good student and stuff and no <laughs> <laughs> really especially in high school high school i was a horrible student yeah i was, the same I was always skipping and stuff yeah skipping doing uh extracurricular activities oh yeah yeah <laughs> um so did you have any family that went into the military genji yes yes um my dad he went to west point um decided not to do his uh, commission but finished up his his stint as enlisted this was during vietnam so promotions were really quick i actually learned this really recent he so he went to west point Decided not to fulfill his commission, went non commission instead. So he went in as an E3, and in like a year and a half, he got to E6. Oh, wow. Damn. Which was pretty cool. Uh, my grand- dad's dad, he was a Marine in World War II. Oh, awesome. So that's always been in the family. I know he was here in Hawaii. Oh, okay. you know, as a Marine. Nice. Um, okay, so I, did you go into the military right after high school, or did you take some time off? Oh, yeah, I, I took some time after high school. I was supposed to be going to college, but... Uh, Too much party? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
could put it nicely, yes, I was I was partying instead of going to school. Yeah. Uh, I signed up um, when I was 20. Oh, really? So I had it in my mind that I was going to join, but then September 11th hit. I was like, okay, this is official. I'm going to. Where did you go to basic? Benning. Or Benning. Or Benning. The Arizona. Uh, and went? I went together. Oh, you and Arizona went to basic together? Okay, so of course, he's from Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. Here, white, but we met in basic. Uh, and we ended up going to AIT for Gordon together, of course. And we ended up like going to Germany together. So, like from basic AIT Germany, granted, he was first platoon I was in second but we spent our entire military time together which is pretty cool that's awesome oh yeah there's our the man I just said him out the other day so we're pretty good <laughs> I always tell him I'm like here's our you're like you're basically like the heart of the group because like you could be the biggest shit bag and there's our will still like be your best friend <laughs> yeah. that's awesome um so you went so you went to Fort Gordon for AIT right yeah. And then um, you went to Germany. Now you deployed before. I was on my first deployment. I was on your second deployment. Did a lot change when from the first deployment that you had? How many did you? All right. I got a million questions going at once, but uh, sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I got all these things going. Like, okay. So um, how was your first deployment different from the deployment me and you had when we were at Pop Justice? Okay. So. First deployment was what uh, April two thousand three to August two thousand four, I believe. Uh, we were supposed to go for twelve months. Uh, got extended for three months, so we were there for fifteen months. Uh, you really get it on the bird to leave because I heard rumors like you guys were literally getting ready to leave, and you found out last minute, or was that just yeah? From from what I remember, we were packing up the connexes. All of our stuff was tore down and we were getting ready to go. And then we were told, yeah, good thing. Good thing for another three months. All right. It was, it was a really bird. But that's that's what I remember. I could be completely wrong. Yeah. I just remember <laughs> once and then turned into 15. All right. Uh, what the time? The time. One more time. What were you doing during that time? Like, what was your responsibilities? Uh, see, I was with, started out with, I think it's Hotel 4-3. Was there some two? We were prim I was primarily on BIA, Baghdad International Airport. Um, being, being the hub of Camo, that's yeah. it. It was totally different from when we went, because we went from our job was basically obsolete, as you know. <laughs> so we spent a lot of time with Goy. The way we did move up, they took a group of us, small of us, to go to Justice. And Lemansky yep. Lemansky and I went from doing that to work an entry control point in the Iraqi jail. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Those good times. Did you do after that, that too, Lemansky? Did you yeah. what happened? That was November 05 to 06, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was my, those were my only two, only two deployments. What did you do when you got back? Like, did you try uh, to do Yes. Yeah. Say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Um, what did I do when I got back? A lot of PMCS. Mm -hmm. Motor Pool Monday, right? Yeah inventory and i don't remember doing a lot of job related stuff when we got back yeah more cleaning and prepping and because that was that was also a transition between i think it was like one for one was disbanding and then uh the change over to one four six and yeah and i went to we got to deploy our second time together <laughs> I, I think that's, did you ETS during that time or did you PTS to another unit? No, I ETS May 2008. Oh, okay. Nice. That was <laughs> to just leave. Yeah. 
frustrated all the time. But I probably should have stayed because when I got out, I missed it. Yeah, that was the same way. I was like, man, I was like, they can't pay me enough to do this. Because for me, it was like, I know we're, you know, that's our job is constantly be deployed. But like, it was just like, I'm on my third deployment now. <laughs> I'm like, if I stay in, I don't know how many deployments I'll be up to. So it's weird. Though. Another thing too is like, when you do, like there'll be people like us that deploy all the time. And then there's others that's like, first sergeants that's never deployed it's just like that's crazy <laughs> so, um so uh, what did you do when you got out Lemansky? i got out uh i had a month of leave so i used that month to secure a job get my state driver's license get my state id just get everything set up so when I hit my first day as a, I guess, civilian. I would be up and ready to just go. Nice. Uh, so I landed a job. Said had, had my driver's license, had my, my ID. Uh, but it was a, uh, I guess you can say it was a crappy job. What was it a good job? It was, I was uh, a night manager for a little mom and pop shop. Oh, okay. Right. Close up the shop, uh, count money, and make sure people didn't steal stuff. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't really leading anywhere, and but I was I got comfortable, right? Comfortable where I was. Uh, the shop ended up closing down, which kind of forced my my hands like, okay, shop is closing down. Let's go back to school. Okay. Oh, I went back to school. Uh, started out. Doing culinary business, changed my major to elementary ed, changed my major again to elementary ed special ed. Oh, wow. Did a whole bunch of like volunteer work and working in sped classrooms and working with sped students. Um, I was kind of like, yeah, this, this is what I want to do, right? Yeah. Be a teacher to, to sped kids. I'm good with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was forced as a prereq to take an art class or a music class. And I took a ceramics class. Never like did. I said, my degree in ceramics. So at that time, <laughs> I major in photography. It was good. I mean, art has helped me uh, mentally, right? Psychologically. I was kind of get rid of everything that's happened in the past, all the bad things that happen, have happened in the past. And move forward, right? Because I was able to take everything that I was feeling and put it into my work. And it definitely shows because it's all badass. So it's oh. like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that that helped me. Um so like right now like I'm I'm awesome. I'm in an awesome place. I haven't done art in like two years, I think. Really? Which is kind of bad. I should get back into it. Um, Do you think you stopped because you haven't really needed it? Because uh, it was kind of like your, how you know, it helped you, and now it's kind of like the new thing. Yeah, it was my outlet. Um, yeah. Make something, just to create something, and take all that negative energy and then turn it into something positive. Right. Did you do any of your own draw up any of your own work that's uh, for your tattoos, Lemansky? I always wondered that. Did I draw any of them? Yeah, like just draw them and then like bring them into like a tattoo artist and then they did them or you, you almost did... all of them. Almost all of them. Nice. Now, do you have a favorite one out of all of them? On my back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my back consists of five different pieces, right? That kind of blend into one. But all my tattoos are pre-drawn, right? And I, I draw them, put them off to the side, and then. I'll get them later on but i've designed them to where it might be a separate piece but looks like one as a whole so the one on, the, on my back the center part it's the rising sun of japan has a bonsai tree that comes in the center uh with some cherry blossoms and like flowing down the river nice i would say that's that's my that's my favorite one that's your favorite one Nice. Yeah, I remember 
uh, you were just getting your koi fish done, right? When I when that was the last one I saw. You, I, I thought you drew that one, but I was yeah. like, I wanted to make sure that I didn't know you. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty fucking badass. So. Now, do you have any space to do more, or are you all done now? <laughs> <laughs> so you're the you got full sleeves now. I I have a ton of space. Um, yeah. I just don't have the money to give do it. <laughs> no, right? They're expensive. <laughs> They're so expensive. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, life life has gotten way to. Yeah. I, I have a, a tattoo fund, right? but that's that's extra. Yeah. But it's my car if I get into that tattoo fund, right? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> one one day like living in Hawaii, like the typical day there. I know it's a crazy expensive. I spent five days in Hawaii and spent five thousand dollars on leave. So I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh, that, that's crazy. Yeah. I was on the main island though, so I was just doing like I went to the zoo and that out of all the zoos I've been to, Hawaii is not like uh, for my I don't know. Have you been to the Hawaiian zoo? I'm I'm sure you've probably been to Hawaii. Uh, yeah. It's right down the Oh, right down the road here yeah oh, so you're on the main island too then yeah uh, Oahu. Yeah. yeah i saw you saw uh Chikowski not too long ago too a couple years ago yeah. here uh, jason hughes he's here oh really nice yeah it's like if anyone's ever in hawaii they always have you ran into Maglamon at all no no oh, okay i don't know one day um aaron said that you know, we, we might Get to all get together at his place and just grill and stuff like that. But I'm I'm always freaking busy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. You just started a new job. How is that going? Yeah, I work IT now. Yeah, it's just every <laughs> every person I know is just like either they're doing IT or they're like I gotta get into IT. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. Are you I doing like the security we... side too, like that kind of thing, or networking, or? Uh, no, I'm I'm more help desk. Oh, okay. Portion. Um, when staff have issues with their phones or their computers and they can't log into something or they need help with a program or whatever, you know, that, that's, that's what I'm doing. And any tip that comes in, you know, I'll, I'll help them, help them with that. So I've had to work on my uh, customer service. I already got clients for being too blunt too strict, too stern with people, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's a skill and I'm, I'm slowly learning it. I'm getting better. That's being, funny. Being, so I gotta tell you, like the first time I remember the very first day I ever met, I got to Germany and I'm, I was with Lazar's roommate. Do you remember Lazar at all? But yeah. He, he was uh, transitioning out. And um, I remember I'm opening the door and you're wearing one of your brown t-shirts and uh, army shorts. And I just remember you go, so and I was like, who the hell is that dude? That dude's bad. <laughs> you're using the freaking uh, the phone because I think you're one of the few people that use the pay phone that was like on the end of the hall. It's like, I think I just ran into Batman. <laughs> God. But like, yeah, you always had like a presence of don't fuck with me. So I could definitely see that like it's gotta be a struggle that like, you know, you're you gotta like be more like, ah, how's it going? You know, that was a yeah. good one for me too. I remember I got in trouble once at my old job because I would always say, sir and ma'am. And for some reason in New Hampshire, that's just respectful. Because they're like, don't call me, sir. I'm like, okay, sorry. It's like past six years, I've been calling people that. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty hard transition. So, um, what else have you been up to? Like, how's life? Shit, how's life? When when was the last time we saw so, Last time I talked to you was mo mostly, um, I knew you had surgery, but I didn't know what it was about, really. It's always right. when you see on Facebook, like, hey, guys, like, just keep me in your thoughts and go. And I was like, oh, and then I see you in the hospital bed. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? All right. Yeah. So November 30th of 2020, I had throat surgery so i don't know if you can see this oh yeah looks pretty right. badass bro oh i had a gigantic cyst 
that was growing on my thyroid, right? It was like, like this. Wow. Now, if you take a bird's eye view of, sorry, I'm watching, watching the cat and hoping she doesn't jump on the bed. Um, oh, bird's eye view of your throat, right? Kind of round, right? Round like that. So the cyst was pushing on it so bad I was kind of doing that to my throat. Oh my God. So it was difficult for me to swallow food. I had troubles breathing uh, at times, you know, laying at a certain angle or crunched up or even like laying down field position. Like I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. It was absolutely horrible. Um, so of course I went to the doctor and then best CAT scan is done and or MRIs, MRIs done of, of the of the throat, um, and yeah, it was it was a gigantic cyst. We didn't know if it was cancerous or not. The only way to, I guess, tell if it was cancerous was to do a biopsy. But in order to do a biopsy of it, they had to go in through my nose, down my throat, and, and into it. Couldn't go, this, couldn't go this way, but it had to go up like that. And like even then, probably couldn't be able to tell. I mean, you'd have to get a bunch of tests and a bunch of other tests to test done. So gave me options, right? We don't know if it's cancerous, so you have three options. We can sit and wait and monitor it. It may you know, get smaller, it may get larger. We have no idea. Um was it the second option was uh, going through and then draining it, draining the cysts. So it would go through my nose, down my throat, it would make a slit, drain it out, drain the, the cyst fluid out, and sew it up. Uh, but then I was told there was a higher chance of it returning, like coming back like tenfold and getting much larger. Yeah. And then surgery so done like every six months or so. Right, to drain the fluid. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that being in a hospital all the time. They said, okay, well, then, then there's a third option. We can have surgery, I'll take it out, and it will reduce the chance of it coming back from 85% to about 15%. Right? So it's possible it may come back, but there's a higher probability that it won't come back. And only then, when we take it out, dice it all up and check to see if it's cancerous or not. And I was like, okay, I need to talk to my family. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I want. I want to have this surgery. Like, yeah. And when he said that, I was like, yes, I want to have it. He's like, no, you should, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple of weeks. You can discuss it with your family. No, I want to get, no. Talk with your family. Okay. So talk, talk with my family. Uh, talk to my family on, uh, Skype them all. Um, and uh, yeah, I talked to them, gave them the, the lowdown uh, details, not all the details because my sister couldn't quite handle all the details of it. Um, gave them the options and what I want to do, and then I wanted to hear what they want. Wanted. What should I do? What do you think I should do? But ultimately, this is what I'm going to do. Of course, I got got their input. Um, it was all, of course, supportive. Do do what you think is right. So yeah, ended up uh, deciding to get the surgery done. Um, no, when yeah, you I, had the cyst, could you see it physically, or was it just inside? Like when you walked around, could, was there like a bulge or anything? Or yeah, oh, there was. A, oh wow. Well. Um. After after this, I'll email you a picture of a uh, side view of what, what it looked like in front of you, right? Because right now you can see my my uh, Adam's apple, right? Yeah. Like you couldn't see my Adam's apple. That's how large wow. the system. I mean, it was it was, it was it was pretty large. You gotta come up uh, with like a badass story though for it. <laughs> when when I first got back. 
uh, from, from surgery and back to work. And I was working security at the museum, right, at the time. So I, I would work the, the front. And sometimes people would ask me, like, oh, what, what happened to your throat? Yeah, I went to Chinatown. A couple of guys jumped. They got the jump in, try to try to kill me. But uh, you see this? I'm still here. Think about what happened to them. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, so awesome. So I, I, I use that story about how people, you know, a couple of guys jumped me and got, got the drop on me and, and they tried to kill me. And I was like, no, 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 that's, that's not. <laughs> That's not. The rise must have gone. Woo, what? <laughs> That's so awesome. But it also depends on who's at. Mm -hmm. Young adult asked me, "Yeah, sure, I'm gonna throw that story at you." Um, Could you like lost a, your voice from that Lemansky from what the position it was? Um, lost it? No. Um, an alteration of it. It could have gotten deeper. <laughs> it's already like, yeah. <laughs> It'd be like chocolate rain, man. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, I, I asked him, like, would this change, this change the tone of my voice or, you know, the, the volume of it or whatever? Um, yeah, it wouldn't have gone any higher. If he did end up nicking something, uh, which is highly unlikely because he's one of the, highest rating ENT surgeons uh, here in the state. Um, yeah, I said, if anything, it would just get deeper. And I was like, that's cool. I already have a deep voice. And anything deeper is just... just Makes know, me look more badass. I, With the scar, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so had, had that surgery. And I was in the hospital for four nights. So surgery was Monday. I think November 30th is Monday. And then I was out. I was distar discharged on Friday. Right. Wow. I was very active in getting my ass out of that hospital. Right. Yeah. So I was as is. And when I was able to get up and walk, you know, walk, walk around the wing, which was, I think, four, four laps was a mile or something. Um, you're probably like, can I run it? I'll run it. <laughs> I'll run? Hell, hell no. But walk. I'll definitely walk. Yeah. And I was told that I was the record setter nice. for quickest person out of surgery to walk 20 laps. Nice. Yeah. So I was, I was happy, pretty happy about that. Um, of course, it, I didn't go from getting up and walking 20 right away. Walk one. I was like, no, like I want to go some more. No, like I, I want to keep on going. And once I got really tired, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have gone that that last lap. I need I need to get to bed and I get to bed and I pass out. <laughs> but I try to walk as much as possible, just so I can stay active. Um, was your family there the whole time to help you? No. Uh oh, COVID. COVID. That's right. Yeah. COVID. So no visitors. Jeez. Nothing. I was able to call. I had my phone nice and I Skyped. Um, but yeah, no, no people in the waiting room, nothing. But I don't feel bad at all because in the wing that I was at, there is an elderly gentleman who was there since pretty much the beginning of COVID. Right? He was there for like, what, eight months or something, like nine, nine months. And his wife was not able to visit him wow. for those like eight, nine months. Um, one of my last days was either Thursday or Friday. They finally allowed his wife to go and like Good. visit, even though it was, I was told it was against the rules. Yeah. But it was so long. And like I say, it was an elderly gentleman, elderly couple. So I was like, that's freaking awesome. Yeah. I yes, they were able to do that because that's wow. Does it, does it add to the like the fear, like knowing that COVID was going around and you're going into a damn hospital where like it, you could have got infected or anything, or were you not even thinking of that at the time? No, is yeah, I wasn't quite really worried about COVID. Um, 
Yeah, I knew that I was going to be in, in areas where I could be exposed to the virus, but I'm I'm fairly sure that I had COVID. So COVID became yes prevalent, well known in what March, right? March of 2020. It was like, like this is COVID. Um, but beginning of the year in January, I got really sick. Like, I didn't get my flu shot, right? And I just got really freaking sick. And COVID wasn't people didn't know about COVID. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I got I got really, really sick. And when I went to the doc, I think I think I went to the doctor, the VA, they're like, Yeah, this isn't the flu. We don't know what it is. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. oh, water. And it wasn't much. I think they gave me Tylenol told me to just, just rest, which I did. I got better in like two weeks. Gave you some right. ibuprofen and water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I think I had it back in January because like I said, I got really sick. I had a hundred plus 10, um, came out of nowhere and I was out for like two weeks. Dang. Crazy. So it's possible. Edit, it yeah but we don't we won't we won't know for sure yeah so um, when you got vaccinated i'm assuming you got vaccinated in your yeah office now. how was your second shot shot did you get really sick again or no really sick no okay my second shot was weird yeah it's very because the day of i was fine my arm was a little bit sore you know i was massaging it you know when i was good a couple of days later, I got like a really bad headache out of nowhere. What, what the hell is this? Oh, this this maybe it's a side effect of my second COVID shot. Okay, I'm okay. And then like a week later, I got sick. Oh, hard, like sleepy, I don't feel good. The, a week later, seriously? I, I had no idea. Okay, this has to be a side effect from, from the yeah. second shot. Yeah. <laughs> All sorts of ways. It was, it was crazy. That's it's crazy. I wanted to cut back to one of your photos, Lomansky. It looks like you're teaching a class. Um, do you know what photo I'm referring to? The one in the intro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you looks like you're, are, is that what you're doing? You're teaching someone something? Are you explaining? Oh, it? okay. So that was a highlight of a year of probably my art career. Awesome. So when I started working at the museum, I got hired on to be the 3D instructor for the Warriors program, the ceramics instructor. The Warriors program is the museum li linked up with um, Schofield, right? And taught classes to currently serving soldiers with PTSD trying to stay in the military. And my BFA thesis project was on PTSD and orbits, right? Uh, so I got hired specifically because of that. And I was, you know, I taught a few classes, taught a few soldiers, you know, you know told them you know, my story. Um, and then, you know, used ceramics and building stuff to help them kind of face their fears, face their demons, and get better or try to get better. Now, that picture that was taken, that photo that was taken, um, so this is when Trump was, was still here and uh, Pence was still around, right? So that lady I'm talking to, that's the second lady. That is Mrs. Karen Pence. So uh, she came to Hawaii uh, to, I guess, look at the various uh, therapeutic programs for soldiers. Mm -hmm. And the Warriors program was part of this like agenda thing. So she was going around talking to various people on, on school field. And I was telling her, you know, what I did how I do it and there's more like you fall into a hole 
right? We fall into a hole and we have trouble getting out. Uh, there's so many people around you that will tell you how to get out of that hole, but they won't actually help you get out of that hole. Right? I've been in that hole, right? And I've used art and ceramics to get myself out of that hole. So through me teaching these soldiers you know, how to use ceramics and how to use art as their own personal therapy, I'm jumping in that hole with you that's so awesome. together. Right. So that's what I was explaining. I was explaining to her. That's awesome. so it, that, was, that was a freaking highlight. So before she came, of course, you know, I was asked if I wanted to do that. I was like, hell yeah. Oh yeah, she's like, <laughs> she's up here. I ended up doing a little bit of research on her. She's a former teacher. Uh, she loves art therapy, right? Um, and I was like, oh, this is this is like perfect. Like, tell her these different things that, we, that we're doing and you know how we're making a difference. So yeah, that was <laughs> that was good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's because yeah. awesome. I I was like, I know he's teaching something because you can tell by his hands. I didn't know who we were teaching. That's awesome. Yeah. How many um, yeah. soldiers would you say you've helped out doing what you did? Uh, um, like, was it numerous soldiers or was it like, um, I don't know, like a, maybe about 50. 50? That's awesome. It, 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 was, it was classes of about uh, eight to about 12. Too many people in one that all have like varying levels of, of ESD. Uh, too much for any one person, right? So yeah, I, I would be, I was the instructor, had the soldiers, and then there is one or two uh, reps from school field. The, the, it's the therapy program. I think one was a psychologist or psychiatrist, and the other one was like, helped something with, with the, the military side of the program. But it was it was a few classes that, that I taught. Uh, I also subbed in for the uh, two dimensional um, class. So the gentleman that's standing next to me, uh, the older, yeah. kind of older, he was the two D instructor, uh, Navy vet, retired from the Navy, right? does painting and screen printing and stuff like that. So he did the two D stuff. Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, so about, about, about 50. And then funding, funding came a, you know, took a big punch to the program. Uh, so my class got cut because 3D art is much more expensive than 2D art, right? Uh, so you have to think of the clay, you have to do the firing, you have to do the, the gas that's going into the firing, you have to do about like the electric and all that stuff. Right, so my my part of the program got cut, but I still, like I said, I sub for the, the two two D guy every now and then. So about about 50, 50 students. Did anyone ever come up to you after, or was it like, oh, or maybe down the road, or ever hit you up? And I was like, hey man, thanks for showing me this. Yes. Oh, I'm I'm zooming a shit ton of them, probably did. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. last is which is awesome. Wow, that's awesome, let me ask you, man. So what kind of goals really. are you working on now? What's that? What kind of goals are you working on now? What do you got going on that you're, I know you just got a brand new job. So you think about uh, going back into school or you just. One day, one, one day, day I'd like to get my, my master's yeah. uh, in a post back degree, uh, teaching or art, but art doesn't really pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's tough, like like you just said. Is that it's it's kind of sad that they would cut that because it's so important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you did so much good, but if they didn't cut that, you could be doing. You probably still be doing it today. You know? So, yeah. So art, go back to school for art. Go back to school for teaching. Maybe take some classes in IT. I don't have any certs. Oh right. right. Everything that I learned was through the military. Or you know, like tearing apart my laptop or my desktop and building computers on the side, yeah. like helping friends and family fix their stuff. Okay, now that you're the IT guy, I'm sure everyone's coming up to you. It's like, hey man, I got this issue. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, fortunately, you know, for, through 
what little we did in the military, a lot we did in the military, and then uh, all, all the side stuff. It, and it's very easy online. Okay. Yeah, that's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Nice. What's your first cert you're going to go for? Oh, man. I, I don't know. You should definitely hit up Kenny because Kenny's like a wealth of knowledge in that. He'd be a great, like, he, he's, Kenny's been telling me since I got out, get into the IT world, man. That's where all the money is at. So yeah. it's cool you made that transition over to that. That's awesome. It's kind of rough at a much older age, right? Because we're, we're the same age. Yeah. I, bro, I'm, at least you've been doing it for a while. I just started. I, I hit up Lamance. So I hit. Uh, Genji up not too long ago because I'm starting an algebra class and uh, I'm like, dude, I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> You're trying to walk me through it. I'm just like, I got past that one. But, uh, and then, so I got an A in that class and then nice. I took college level uh, algebra thinking it was the next step up because I needed, because that was like just to get you ready for algebra. And the class I took was like the advanced one of that, which I didn't know. So I signed up for it. Oh my God, I'm seeing like, <laughs> triangles okay. I'm just like nope so I'm just, this one I'm not doing so good but um, the next one I got going on is quantitative reasoning so it's supposed to be like in between those two classes so hopefully yeah uh, yeah hopefully that'll be a little, a little bit better <laughs> but yeah being I mean, almost 40 it's it's hard to get back into that kind of like groove you know don't don't mention that that 40 number man I'm, I'm- <laughs> for the rest of my life <laughs> yeah that's what i tell people at least yeah. the people at work are like how old are you like 23 i'm like i am today <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so um i'm trying to think uh, so going back into your military career would you change anything or did you um would you have reclassed anything? Would you make any changes to your military career? Yes. Yes. One. What's that? Drink less, save more money, and travel more. I can't <laughs> believe. Yeah, we're both in Germany, Genji, and I never went anywhere. I was. That was like the one thing I wish I would have. If you could give any advice to new soldiers going in, what would you tell them? Same thing. Drink less. <laughs> <laughs> Drinks like yeah. um, I did a lot of drinking. Yeah. I don't even drink anymore. I haven't had a drink in uh, going on almost five years now. Awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah so, uh, I'll have a beer here and there, but I've the only time I really drank really was in Germany too, because like we'd work throughout the week and then Friday nights we'd all meet up and just hang out and have drinks and stuff so it's pretty crazy but that's awesome man all right Genji well thank you for being on the show man um, yeah. is there anyone you want to shout out to that you want to get on here and see but we need means we need star never yes definitely no. you're Zari for sure I've been begging him <laughs> he'll get on here I just gotta warm him up a bit oh come on and definitely Carlos Rivera. I got to get him on here. I'm yeah. sure he's had a lot. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> got to get him on. All right, Levansky, man, thank you again. And if you ever need anything, you let me know. All right. Sounds All right. good. All right, bud. You take care. Yeah, you Bye-bye. too.